I bought the world's smallest commercially available reef tank and today I'm going to set it up to house a very special type of anemone and show you how I intend to have success and it starts right now. Now everything on this tank is fun size. It's five inches long, three inches wide and it holds less than a quarter of a gallon water. Even the pump it comes with is smaller than my big toe. But it does have some really cool little features just like a real reef tank and for a start it actually has a sump. Now don't get me wrong, it's not quite big enough for a skimmer or canister filter, but it does come with little baffles and sponges that you can use for filtration. And they've even thought about cable management, as they have two small holes at the back, one for the included pump and one for the optional heater. Up top it has a neat little removable lid to which you can attach the included LED light. And the light is actually surprisingly decent. It's USB powered and it gives off a really nice bright blue light that will really make the colours of my anemones pop and fluoresce. And as if that's not enough, the light is even controllable. Now this entire setup cost me just £40, so it doesn't have an advanced controller or app, but it does have four power settings, which means I can choose a nice low light to start with and build up to a much brighter light when my anemones are settled in. Now I am of course used to setting up full size tanks and my current main tank is four foot by two foot by two foot and holds over a hundred gallons of water. So I found every stage of the setup absolutely hilarious on such a small scale. Straight off the bat, the first challenge was setting up the rocks gate. Now I managed to scavenge a couple of tiny bits from my local fish shop, Reefkeeper Moss End, but in the end that wasn't enough and I couldn't find anything small enough, so I had to buy a larger piece and just smash it up with a hammer. Which I absolutely loved, because there's nothing better than smashing stuff up with hammers. And actually getting the aquascape right is really important on such a small tank. There isn't much space to play with at all, but it has to look good so I don't just end up with a tank full of rubble. So I carefully set about building two islands. I wanted a reasonable amount of height and depth, and I wanted angles for easy placement of the anemones, and I wanted the islands to look good together to create a bit more interest. So I made two roughly the same size that would sit next to each other and create a gully down the middle. And while finding rock to make the scape was so difficult, because the little rubble bits were so light, sticking it all together was really easy and just needed the odd dab of super glue. And once I'd built my rock scape, I wanted to add a sand bed to complete the natural reef look. Now I bought the smallest bag I could find in the shop, but it could still fill the Pico tank to the brim 10 times over. Hashtag Pico tank life. And all I needed was two tiny little cups of sand, so I cleaned it off and then gently scooped it into the tank and smoothed it around the base with my fingertips into a nice even bed that I actually think looks really cool. Once the sand bed was in, I then added my aquascape. The angles are great, there are no sheer edges, it's the perfect size and there's a gully between the two that really draws your eye. And if I could scale this up, it would be the perfect aquascape for my 4 foot by 2 foot by 2 foot tank. And next up was adding the hilariously small amount of salt water. I decided to use water for my established reef tank for two reasons. Firstly, it's been proven that beneficial bacteria live in the water column, so by using water from an established tank, I can give my little Pico a kickstart. And secondly, because I don't plan on feeding this Pico tank, the nutrients from my main tank will potentially provide a food source for the NEMS. And when I'd finished filling up the tank and sub, it held a combined 900 milliliters of salt water, which is around 30 fluid ounces. Now, before I added the anemone, I tested the pump to make sure it worked properly, and it does. The water comes up from the sump into the main tank via the pump and little weir box. It then trickles back down the sump at the other side by a little downpipe. Now I know that's a pretty basic thing to get excited about, but seeing it up and running with a bit of water movement at the surface was really cool. So with all that done, my tiny little tank was ready to host its anemone. So with my pointer finger, I took Michael out of the holding cup he'd been in for the last six weeks and placed him very carefully onto the rock I wanted him to sit on. And by the way, the anemone is called Michael. And I was really pleased to see that Michael landed exactly where I wanted him and settled in immediately. Anemones have a little foot that they use to hold onto the rock work, and within seconds Michael was making himself comfortable, bedding himself into the rock work and finding the exact spot he wanted. And within less than half an hour, he'd fully opened up and was starting to bathe in the light. Now anemones are photosynthetic animals, so it was really pleasing to see it open up straight away and start soaking up some rays. However, now it is time to address the elephant in the room, the size of the tank. While I find everything about this tank hilarious and cute, quite simply when it comes to aquariums, size matters and there ain't no replacement for displacement. So what makes me think I'm going to have success on such a tiny tank with such a delicate animal as an anemone? 
Well, while the typical anemone you might see in a saltwater aquarium, the bubble tip anemone can be very sensitive indeed. Michael is very much a different breed. He is a Mahano anemone, which are known to be absolutely bombproof. In fact, in most tanks they're seen as a pest because they're really hardy and spread all over the place, no matter what your water quality. And in a recent video, my fellow YouTuber Presti Dreef demonstrated just how hardy these guys are. He found Aptasia anemones, which are very similar to Mahano's, living in an inch of water in one of his draining tanks. There is no aeration whatsoever, very little light, no heating, and the level of salt in the water was only half what you'd expect to see in a typical reef tank or in the ocean. And for the first six weeks I had him, Michael lived in a urine sample cup. The lid was on so there was no aeration, there was no real direct light, and the temperature probably swung quite significantly during the day. Although at this point I would like to point out that it was not a used urine sample cup. And despite all of that, Michael looked really healthy when I took him out, so this hilariously small tank will be like staying in a five-star hotel for him. And to make absolutely sure, I added a small piece of mature filter media for my main tank, so the tank has a full suite of beneficial bacteria. But with that being said, I do of course anticipate a few challenges. Because I won't be feeding him directly, he'll be relying solely on light, which should be absolutely fine, but I will have to keep my eye on him. And at the moment, the tank temperature is swinging by about 3 degrees centigrade from morning to evening, and we're not even into the peak of the summer in the UK yet. And beyond that, when we get into winter, I'll probably have to buy him a tiny little heater. And while I absolutely love this tank, I think we can all agree that the less said about the name, the better. Now, while there will be some parameter fluctuations, the salinity level should be nice and stable. The tank has a tight-fitting lid on it, which will prevent evaporation, and I'll be doing 90 milliliter, 10% water changes every week to keep the water pristine. I've already done the first one, and it took about 30 seconds courtesy of this 100 milliliter syringe. So with all of that, combined with the fact that Michael is basically as tough as Chuck Norris, I'm confident he'll be fine. And in fact, I like Michael so much that I decided to add a load more Mahano friends to keep him company. Now, as I said, Mahanos are considered pests in a reef tank, partly because they spread so quickly, but also because they can sting corals. But of course, that isn't a problem for me in this tank, and Mahanos are actually pretty beautiful animals. At the moment, Michael is a lovely deep fluorescent green, but when they settle, they can show different colours, and I'm really excited to see how Michael and his friends get on long term. Now, this video isn't just a stunt for YouTube. Michael came into my possession as a hitchhiker on a coral I bought, and while I really didn't want Mahano and Emily taking over my main tank, it felt like a real shame to let such a beautiful animal go and not do anything with it which is why he spent the first six weeks in a urine sample cup while I decided what to do with him and waited for the tank to arrive. And while I have no doubt this will of course be a challenge, I'm committed to making it work long term. So I'll report back on the channel with how I get on, and you'll be able to see him over my shoulder in all of my videos, so you'll know he's getting on okay. Now if you want to follow my journey with Michael and his friends, make sure you subscribe for future videos. And while Michael has a name, his friends don't, so let me know your suggestions in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, happy reefing.